So if you're holding rune, you'd probably like to put that rune to work and earn some yield. So this tutorial is going to go over what your options are. So as of right now, there is no simple single-sided staking where you just stake your rune and earn more rune. There is discussion happening by the Thorchain devs to introduce one or maybe even two different ways of doing this in the future. So that's something to look out for. But in the meantime, there still are some really good options that are going to be suitable for pretty much any strategy and any type of holder. So all of the yield opportunities for Rune are going to be through liquidity pooling. But there's a few different strategies and ways to go about this for different risk profiles, different goals. So we're going to cover those. If you're new to liquidity pooling, basically what you're doing is you are providing the liquidity to allow swappers to swap. So for example, if you're providing to the Bitcoin pool, you're providing Bitcoin and Rune and allowing for those swaps to take place. And somebody else or you as well might be providing to the ETH and Rune pool. And that is what would allow a Bitcoin to ETH swap that would be going through Rune on the back end. And you as the liquidity provider providing to that pool, which is always 50-50 between the two assets, you're allowing those swaps to take place and you're being rewarded with fees from those swaps. So the first method to earn yield on Rune would be to pair it with an asset that you're already holding anyways and you want to continue to have exposure to. So for example, if you're already holding Bitcoin and you want to be holding that Bitcoin for the foreseeable future, you feel the same way about Rune, then the Bitcoin Rune pool would make a lot of sense for you. You can not only put that Rune that's sitting in your wallet to work, but you're actually also putting that Bitcoin to work. That would apply just the same to any of these other assets, ETH, stablecoins, really anything that is currently available on ThorSwap. Just the thing that you want to be careful about is you wouldn't want to just simply look for the highest APR and choose those assets simply based on that because you're still going to be exposed to the price exposure of these assets. So you want to make sure to only be in pools with assets that you already do want exposure to. So as I was saying, the first and really best place to start with liquidity pooling with your rune would be to pair it with an asset that you're already holding and you're already bullish on, you already you don't want to sell it, you want to continue holding that for the foreseeable future. So let's say that's Bitcoin for this example. Of course, that's an asset that a lot of people are relatively comfortable holding for a long period of time. So let's walk through adding to this Bitcoin pool and then we'll do some other strategies where you're starting with only rune. So we're looking at the Bitcoin pool, which is currently at 10% earnings. This is showing an average based on the past seven days, and this would be over the course of a year. So that can fluctuate depending on market conditions and activity. So we can just go to add liquidity, and you can see I have some balances. I already have some wallets connected, but you have all kinds of options depending on which wallets you're comfortable using. I'm using XDeFi, which has all the chains for this example, but you could also be connecting a ledger directly, you could be using a key store wallet. You could be using, say, Trust Wallet for the Rune side and Ledger for the Bitcoin side. Basically, you have options and you can have two different types of wallets connected at the same time for the two different chains. So let's say I want to add 40 of my Rune here. It's going to calculate the equivalent amount of Bitcoin, which I have available in my wallet as well. And in this example, because I'm pairing Rune with another asset that I'm already holding anyways, I am adding symmetrically, which means I'm going to have to sign this transaction from both sides. So you can see there's a pending add of Rune and a pending add of Bitcoin. So this first transaction I'm signing is sending the Bitcoin into the liquidity pool. And then it's going to prompt me to also sign to add the Rune into the liquidity pool. But after this example, we'll talk about just adding Rune. So here's the rune ad, and I'm going to sign that. The time this takes depends on the chains that you're actually using. So rune is very quick, but Bitcoin is a slow chain. So this is taking me a few minutes. It's showing that it's pending and doesn't see the other side of the deposit, but just waiting on the Bitcoin to actually be received into the Thorchain pool, you can always check your Bitcoin address on a block explorer. Once that's deposited, you can track your position under liquidity or go to Thor Yield. And on Thor Yield, we can also predict using the LP calculator what this position might look like over time. So let's do a quick example. And we do have an entire video just on this so you can learn how to use this tool very effectively. But I'm just selecting that the asset is Bitcoin. The deposit method is BTC plus Rune. I deposited 40 
Rune and the equivalent BTC. And this will pull live pricing of the two assets and your ability to predict it over the time period that you intend to stay in. So for example, let's go to 12 months to see what this looks like at one year at the given APY. So right now this is assuming the assets don't change in price at all. And we would see that we made about 11% from our initial investment over that time period. Now, if the assets perform dramatically different, you could experience impermanent loss, which is a loss due to the rebalancing of the two assets. Basically, if Rune were to go up more than Bitcoin, you would effectively be selling some Rune and gaining some Bitcoin. Or if the market was going down and let's say Rune was going down more than Bitcoin, then you would be losing some Bitcoin but gaining some Rune. And when this happens really dramatically, you can be in a situation where you're actually worse off than having just held the two assets, but that's where ThorChain and permanent loss protection will protect you. After 100 days, you're at 100% protection. So then your worst case is equivalent to having just held the initial split of the two assets. So for example, let's say, let's say Bitcoin goes up by 50% and Rune goes up by 100% over this period. Now we're seeing the performance versus HODL. That means how your LP performed versus if you had just held these two assets, these amounts in your wallet the entire time is plus 0.987%. The reason that's a little lower than this actually is due to that impermanent loss. It's just being far outweighed by the rewards that you're gaining. If you want to go deeper into this, I suggest watching the full video specifically on this. We touch on impermanent loss protection a bit deeper than I'll go into right here, but I definitely suggest using this tool when you are entering a new liquidity pool position. So let's go back and do some other LP positions, adding just Rune. I'll just leave this pending since that is taking some time because Bitcoin is very slow. Let's see which other pool we might be interested in. Now you can add from just the Rune side, but keep in mind, you're still being exposed to the two assets 50-50. So for example, if I wanted to add just Rune to the ETH pool, I can do that. I'm depositing just Rune, but I'm still being exposed to 50-50 Rune and ETH. Think of it as if you're buying a chunk of that pool with your Rune. So whether you enter from just ETH or just Rune or 50-50 ETH and Rune, the value calculations all end up exactly the same. So this is called adding asymmetrically from just one side. And it's good to think about this like selling half of your asset for the other one. So if you want to asymmetrically LP your rune, think of that like selling half the rune for the other asset. So this is more of a trading strategy, something where you are speculating, you are changing your investment a bit when you're getting into something like this. So with ETH as an example, let's go back to the calculator for a second. Let's say I was bearish on the market and I thought that Rune was going to go down more than ETH. If that was the strategy you were trying to play, then it might make sense to do an asymmetrical add from Rune into the Rune ETH pool because half of your Rune is becoming exposure to ETH. So you can change the deposit method to just Rune. And then looking at this prediction, yes, the predicted value, of course, went down because I'm predicting that the asset prices are going to go down. But you can see that my predicted rune amount is actually up 46.69% over that year period. And if you were bullish on the market, you would want to add rune asymmetrically if you thought ETH was going to outperform Rune. So for example, if ETH was going to go up 50%, but Rune was going to go up 25%, now you're gaining in Rune terms. If you think Rune is going to outperform ETH, then you'd actually be better off if you had ETH adding asymmetrical from the ETH side. Because in this case, if Rune outperforms ETH, if Rune goes up 100% and ETH goes up only 25%, now you can see you're actually losing Rune because half your Rune was exposed to ETH, which didn't perform as good as Rune, and your Rune was being rebalanced into ETH. Let's say our strategy right now is that we think ETH is going to perform better than Rune, then that would be a time where adding asymmetrically from Rune to this ETH pool would make sense. So let's go ahead and just do an example here. I'm going to change from ETH plus Rune to just Rune, but it's still, again, going into the ETH Rune pool and I'm going to add 20 rune. So this is effectively like selling 10 rune for ETH and adding 10 rune. So let's go ahead and add this. And in this case, we only have to sign from the rune side. And when we go to withdraw 
sometime in the future, we'll be withdrawing back into only Rune, even though we were exposed to both the whole time. So confirm this transaction. And while that's going through, that one should just take a few seconds or so. Let's talk about another strategy with stable coins. And yep, that one already went through very quickly, much faster than Bitcoin. So now a conservative strategy would be to LP with a stable coin. So if you already have a stable coin in your portfolio, like USDC or BUSD or USDT or DAI, then you'd be best off doing the first method we talked about at the beginning of this video. Just pair up that stable you already have with your rune that you already have. And now you're putting both to work and you're earning yield on both of them. If you only have rune and you want to pair with a stable coin, adding asymmetrically really means that you are bearish on rune. Again, because that's like selling half that rune for the stable coin. So now you're only half exposed to rune and you're half exposed to the stable coin and you're earning yield on those together. But if rune were to go way up, now your exposure is less. So on the LP calculator, if we go to USDC and we are depositing only rune, let's put 100 rune. And let's just say, let's just start with the prices being flat. Then if the prices are flat, we are gaining 32% in Rune over that year. That's the current APY. But if Rune goes up 100% and USDC stays flat, then we're actually losing Rune because we have half exposure to USDC. And as Rune is going up, it's being rebalanced into USDC. So we're ending up with less Rune. But if we entered this because we are bearish for this time period and we think Rune is going to go down and USDC is hopefully going to stay flat, then let's say this goes down by 25%. Now you're actually gaining in Rune terms quite a bit. So with these asymmetric strategies, you would only want to do these if you are basically taking a trade. You're deciding that you want to change your exposure from Rune to Rune and 50% something else. So if I wanted to take that strategy, again, this would be asymmetrical. So I'm adding just rune to the USDC pool. Let's go ahead and add 30 rune in here and confirm this and sign from our Thorchain rune side and confirm that. And a few seconds later, that one's in the pool. The Bitcoin one is still pending. That's the beauty of the slowness of Bitcoin, but everything is looking good there. It just can take some time because it's a real native L1 Bitcoin transaction. We can check on these LP positions under liquidity. You'll see them here. This one's still pending. I have a few others that were already started before this video, but you can keep an eye on them here. You can go to withdraw. You can click to view your positions on Thor Yield where you can track your yield over time. So those are a few strategies for earning yield on your rune. Again, in the future, there will probably be some options where you can just very simply earn rune on rune. For now, these are your options. If you're holding other assets just stagnantly in your wallet alongside your rune, then you might as well pair them up. You have that impermanent loss protection. You're putting both to work and you're earning yield on your rune and another asset that's just sitting there like Bitcoin. Or you can do those asymmetric strategies, which are more of a trade in a sense. They are taking into account some sort of speculation, some sort of prediction that you want to change your exposure from Rune to two assets. So hopefully that was helpful to get you started on earning some more Rune. Uh, definitely check out that Thor Yield LP calculator video as well, as that would be helpful so you can run through these scenarios and strategies and see how things would play out before you make your decisions. And hopefully that helped to walk you through how exactly to do this uh, using ThorSpot.